Alright gamers, this time around I'm going to be concentrating on the Commodore 64, and more specifically, good and bad movie license games. I'm going to be talking about some cracky movie license titles, as well as some really bad ones. I will also be commenting on what I thought about the movies the games are based on. I won't be going into detail when it comes to the movies, but I will be saying whether I enjoy the movie or not. So let's crack on with it as we start with the first good game. Die Hard on the C64 is a 2D scrolling action game based on the fantastic movie of the same name of course. It was developed by Silent Software and published by Activision. A group of terrorists have taken control of the Nakatomi Plaza in an attempt to steal 600 million dollars. Unfortunately your wife happens to be attending a party in said plaza so now it is down to you to save her. Oh and maybe stop the terrorists too, but save your wife of course. You are tasked to explore the various areas of the plaza to find the items you need to stop the terrorists from carrying out their plans. If you encounter an enemy you will need to defeat them because if you leave the screen you encounter them on they will follow you. A few reviews that are available to read online for the game review the game between the low 50s and the mid 70s it has a score of 7.6 on Lemon 64. I personally really enjoy the game. It offers up decent controls, somewhat impressive visuals and it follows the movie excellently. Overall I would recommend you try this game if you haven't already, but I also get it when people say it isn't a good one. People who say this are wrong, but I get why they'd say it. The Running Man is sitting on a score of 3.1 on Lemon 64. The movie the game is based on is a great one in my opinion, but the game fails to live up to the standard in any way. It is a side scrolling beat em up of sorts where you take control of former police officer Ben Richards who just happens to be played by the Austrian muscle man Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now poor Ben has been framed for the murder of innocent civilians, and is then chosen to take part in a crazy TV game show called, you guessed it, The Running Man. The game is played across five different levels, each featuring a main enemy you have to take care of. And I don't mean take care of like make sure they're tucked up in bed at night or making sure they have a hot bowl of chicken soup when they're feeling unwell. I mean taking care of like making sure they go from a living person to a very much unliving one. One of the worst things about this game is being able to regain your health by kicking dogs. Come on, this is just insane. In between the main levels there is a time limited puzzle game which, if done correctly, can fully restore your health and make you feel like a big man. Unfortunately the game was plagued with below par, well, everything. The graphics are dull, the sound is very poor, and the gameplay is boring and repetitive. It's just not a game I can recommend you play unless you get a kick out of poor games. Super Jim Tendo, I'm looking at you. Definitely avoid this like you avoid your creepy uncle and his super fun shared time. Hudson Hawk is a fantastic side-scrolling platforming game for the Commodore 64. You take control of the titular character and are tasked with stealing three Da Vinci artifacts. The game is almost a predecessor to the stealth action games that are more popular now. You have to make your way through various levels whilst avoiding setting off the security alarms and dealing with security guards and dogs. Hudson Hawk the movie is nothing special, but it does have Bruce Willis in it so naturally I got a decent amount of enjoyment from it. I wish Bruce Willis was my neighbour, or my dad. You have asked improvement on the person who actually is my dad, and I use the term person very loosely when talking about him. Anyway, the gameplay is smooth, responsive and very enjoyable. Just like many of the games on the Commodore 64 it has a cracking soundtrack too. The SID chip really can produce some truly fantastic music. The standout aspect of this game has to be the graphics though. For the time the graphics are varied and quite outstanding. Even though they've not gone for a realistic looking main character, the design they ended up going with is fun and somewhat amusing. There's also some pretty daft enemies thrown in there. There's also some pretty daft enemies thrown in here and there, including a few kangaroos and a parachuting granny. These are, as you can expect, pretty damn hilarious. Overall, Hudson Hawk is one of the best games on the C64 in my opinion, and if you've not played it, you owe it to yourself to give it a go. If someone came up to me in the street and offered me a free copy of this or a punch in the face, I'd definitely take the game, regardless of how much I wanted to be punched in the face. Highlander is awful. 
truly one of the worst games ever made on any system, ever. It is a fighting game that does not know how to fight. It has awful graphics and animation. The sprite work is one of the worst I've ever seen and don't even get me started on the dull, uninspiring backdrops this game possesses. The sound is bad, but it does have a reasonable version of Queen's It's a Kinda Magic playing throughout and the most unnecessarily complicated control system ever implemented into a video game, one that doesn't even do what it's supposed to do. But there is a reason for all of this. Ocean picked up the license for Highlander, but the person responsible for coming up with the agreement was a complete tit, and ended up signing an agreement where if the game was a success, it would literally bankrupt the company due to clauses included in the contract. So Ocean set out to make the worst game they could to ensure the game wasn't successful. I didn't know about this until I watched Larry Bundy's Fact Hunt episode, games purposely made terrible by dickish developers. Once I watched this episode, Highlander started to make sense to me. I'll put a link in the top corner to this episode of Fact Hunt. If you're not subscribed to Larry, then rush over there and hit that red button because he makes some of the best content on the whole platform. Obviously, stay away from Highlander on the C64. If it isn't the worst game on the computer, then it's very, very close. And oh yeah, I've never seen the movie. Let's get this straight. Suburban Commando is an awful movie, and Hulk Hogan cannot act to save his life. And, let's be fair, the plot is arse. However, the game on the C64 is surprisingly good. It is a 2D platforming shooter, just like many other games on the Commodore 64. That's not a bad thing though, because these games happen to be one of my favourite types. Now granted, it falls below par when you consider it came out in 1991, but for the system it is on, it's pretty damn good. The music is decent, and I honestly find myself humming them in my head once I've stopped playing. The graphics aren't really anything to write home about, but the Hulk Hogan sprite is a bloody masterpiece. The backdrops are good on most levels, but they do a decent job of representing the area that the level is set. The sprites can be laughable, but I feel it adds to the charm of the game. They chose an art direction and stuck with it and I commend that. Unfortunately, the game only offers unarmed combat. There are no projectile weapons in the game, which is a bit of a letdown, but the unarmed combat works well enough that this doesn't take away from the game at all. If I'm being perfectly honest, the first level is a bit on the ploppy side, but once you get past it, the rest are a vast improvement. Not enough of an improvement to make the game a 10 out of 10, but enough of an improvement to make you keep wanting to play. The game is sat on 7.1 and Lemon 64, and I'd say that's about right. Commodore Force gave it a 63%, and in many ways, that's about right too. It's not amazing, but it is a lot of fun. Definitely give it a go. Howard the Duck is another movie on this list that I've not seen, and I really wish I'd never played the game. It is atrocious. There's a reason it's sitting on a woeful 4.2 on Lemon 64. It's an awful arcade game which was brought to us by Activision back in 1987. Initially, you may look at the game and think that it looks decent. Well, it kind of does. The graphics are okay, and everything looks like the thing it's representing. The music is also pretty good. It plays a good tune when you finish the mission, but that's about it for good points. When you get past these nice bits, the rest of the game just falls off a cliff. The game is boring and frustrating as fuck to play. The pace of the game is ridiculously slow, and after a little while, and I mean a little while, the game becomes too repetitive and tedious, fighting the same enemy over and over again. The worst thing about Howard the Duck on Commodore 64 is the sheer lack of content. The game just offers you nothing. It can be beat in a very short space of time and has no qualities that give it any replayability. Stay away from it, just like my dad stayed away from me. Well, playing some of those games was exhausting. I would stay away from Howard the Duck, Running Man and especially Highlander, but I would seriously give Die Hard, Suburban Commando and Hudson Hawk a shot. Especially Hudson Hawk, it's brilliant. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And as always, keep on gaming.